Today we're going to talk about filter circuits made with capacitors and inductors. I'll start by talking about what electronic filters actually are, then I'll tell you why they're so important and some of the applications where we use them. I'll show you a few designs that we use for electronic circuits and why these circuits work. We'll talk about how we measure the performance of these circuits, and finally we'll look at how we can analyze electronic filters and how we can design our own. So what are electronic filters? Well, in general, filters are devices that allow certain things to pass through them, and they block out or absorb other things. So for instance, a water filter allows clean water to pass through, but it blocks out or absorbs particles or impurities in the water. Well, an electronic filter works on the same idea, except with electronic filters, they allow certain frequencies to pass through, and they block out or absorb other frequencies. Now, there are several different types of electronic filters. There are low-pass filters that allow low frequencies to go through and block out high frequencies. High-pass filters are the opposite. They allow high frequencies to go through and block out low frequencies. Band-pass filters allow a certain band of frequencies to go through. Band-stop filters block only a certain band of frequencies. And notch filters block just a very, very narrow range of frequencies. So these are all different types of filters that exist. But today, we're going to focus on only low-pass and high-pass filters. And we'll talk about some of the other filters in a separate presentation. Now that we know what filters are, you might wonder where they are used. Well, one common use for filters is in audio applications, in particular, sound systems for your car or your house, or even for a big concert arena. With these types of applications, typically you will have some sort of a sound player and an amplifier, and then you will have speakers. But you often don't just have one type of speakers, you might have several different kinds of speakers. For instance, you might have tweeters for the high frequencies, mid-range speakers for the middle frequencies, and then subwoofers for the low frequencies. The problem is that you don't want to send all of the signal to all of the speakers, otherwise um, it would just sound muddy and, and it wouldn't be right. So you need to sound uh, the high frequencies to the tweeters, the mid frequencies to the mid-range speakers, and the low frequencies to the subwoofer. The way that we can do that is by using several different types of filters. So we can use a high pass filter, a band pass filter, and a low pass filter. The high pass filter allows the high frequencies through, and we can send those to the tweeters. The band pass filter can be set up so that it allows the mid range frequencies to go through, and those can be fed to the mid range speakers. And then the low pass filter can be configured so that the low frequencies pass through it and go to the subwoofer. Another place where filters are needed is in radio. This is a picture of just a small part of the commercial radio band. Each peak on the graph represents one station. If we listen to all of the radio stations at the same time, they would just be playing over each other and it would be really difficult to hear. So what we need to do is we need to filter out the ones we are not interested in and only allow through the one station that we want to hear. The way we do that is with a bandpass filter. On the graph, the bandpass filter is represented by the gray area. The gray um, frequencies are the ones that are allowed to go through the filter and be amplified and played out of the speaker, and the other frequencies are cut off and removed. So look what happens when I move the bandpass filter around. You can see by adjusting the bandpass filter so that different parts of the radio spectrum get through, we can choose which station we're listening to. This is what is actually happening every time you tune your radio. You're actually changing a filter inside of your radio to allow different frequencies through 
And that's how we listen to a particular station that we want to hear. Another place where filters are needed is with sensors. Sensors today measure everything from the speed of our cars to the temperature in our house, even our heart rate. Now these sensors often need to be very sensitive in order to detect the information that they're trying to sense, but that means that they can also be thrown off by environmental factors. And oftentimes they include erroneous data as well as the information that we care about. So we often use filters to get rid of the information that we don't want to see and only keep the information that is important. So for instance, you might see raw data coming from a filter that looks like the thin gray line shown on this graph that has a lot of noise on it. And we might want to get rid of some of that noise. And we can use a filter to do that. And after the data has been filtered, it might look more like the blue line. So some of that high frequency noise has been removed and we're keeping more of the low frequency information that we care about. Now that we know that filters are very important, you might wonder how to actually build them. Well, the keys to filters are capacitors and inductors. These are the components that are really at the heart of filter circuits. So let's talk about capacitors first. Capacitors allow high frequencies to pass through them, but they block out low frequencies. To build a filter with a capacitor, you could build something like this. If you built a circuit like this, this would be a low pass filter. Let's see how it works. Imagine that you created a signal at the input and this signal had some high frequency and low frequency components. We said that capacitors allow high frequencies to pass through them, so the high frequencies would go through the capacitor to ground and get absorbed. The capacitor blocks low frequencies from going through it, so the low frequencies would not go to ground, and the only other place they can go is to the output. So those high frequencies would be absorbed by ground, but the low frequencies would go through to the output. So this is a low pass filter. It allows low frequencies to go through it. If you built a circuit like this, this would be a high pass filter, because if you put a signal at the input with low and high frequencies, the capacitor would block the high frequencies, but allow the low frequencies through to the output. Now, inductors are the other components that are used in filters, and inductors are kind of the opposite of capacitors. Inductors allow low frequencies to pass through them, but they block out high frequencies. So if we wanted to build a filter circuit with inductors, it might look like this. A low pass filter would look like this. If we again applied a signal that had low and high frequencies in it, the low frequencies would pass through the inductor and get to the output, but the high frequencies would be blocked. So this would be a low pass filter with an inductor, and a high pass filter might look like this. Again, the low frequencies can go through the inductor, so in this case, the low frequencies go through to ground, but the high frequencies don't go through the inductor, so they go to the output. So that's how you could build a high pass filter with an inductor. So you can build low pass or high pass filters using either capacitors or inductors. Since filter circuits rely so heavily on capacitors and inductors, let's learn a little bit more about these components. For AC signals, capacitors and inductors act like variable resistors. Their resistance changes based on the frequency of the signal that is applied to them. This frequency dependent resistance is called reactance, and it's abbreviated with an X. Inductive reactance is abbreviated XL. Remember, L stands for inductance. And it's given by the formula 2 times pi times the frequency times the inductance of the component. So low frequencies pass through easily because when the frequency is low, the reactance is low. And high frequencies are blocked out because as the frequency increases, the reactance increases too. Capacitors are kind of the opposite. 
the capacitive reactance is defined as 1 divided by 2 times pi times f times c. Here, high frequencies pass through easily because when the frequency is high, the reactance is low, whereas low frequencies are blocked out because as the frequency goes down, the reactance goes up. So inductors and capacitors behave like variable resistors whose resistance or reactance changes depending on what frequency is applied to them. Now that we know a little bit about how filters work, let's talk about how we measure their performance. Filters are supposed to allow certain frequencies to go through them and block out other frequencies. So the most common way of measuring their performance is to apply signals to their input at various frequencies and then measure how much of the signal comes out at the output of the filter. When we do this, the result is called a frequency response. We usually graph it on a page and that graph is called the frequency response curve. A typical curve for a low pass or for a high pass filter looks like this. You can see that um, what's going on is that you're graphing a ratio of the output voltage over an input voltage as a function of frequency. So when the um, when low frequency signals go in to the filter, the output is very small, less than, so for instance, at 10 hertz here, the output is less than a tenth, less than um, 0.1 times as big as the input. Whereas high frequencies here, around 10 kilohertz, um, the output is about the same as the input. So high frequencies go through this filter easily, but low frequencies are greatly attenuated. But in the middle, there's some gray area where the signals don't go through entirely, but they are, um, they're diminished somewhat, but not a lot. So you might ask, well, we, we want to kind of draw a line somewhere. We want to say frequencies above this point go through our filter, but frequencies below are somewhat attenuated. Um, and we could use that to characterize our filter. So basically what we do is that we pick this number, 70.7%. And we say that um, any frequencies that, um, any, any signals that go through and are above 70.7% uh, of the input, we say that those signals make it through our circuit okay. Whereas any signals that go through and are come out smaller than 70% of the input, well, those have been attenuated a lot. And so um, what we do is we look at our frequency response curve and we look at that 70.7% and we see where that hits the curve and what frequency that is. And then we call that frequency the cutoff frequency. So any signal that is above the cutoff frequency, we say, goes through relatively unscathed, whereas signals below the cutoff frequency are attenuated. So let's look at what the cutoff frequency is in this particular case for this high pass filter that was built with a one microfarad capacitor and a one kilo ohm resistor. If we look carefully at our axes, we can see that they are actually logarithmic in scale. So instead of going you know, one, two, three, four, and so on, they um, go up by factors of 10. So you can see that the smallest number on the, the horizontal axis is 10, and then the next number up is 100, and then 1,000 and 10,000, and so on. So it keeps on growing like that. So our cutoff frequency is between 100 and 200 hertz in this case, okay? so. If we zoomed in more, we could see that in a little bit more detail. But from this vantage point, we can 
pretty much just say that it's between 100 and 200 hertz. Now that you know what a cutoff frequency is, you might wonder how you can design a filter with a particular cutoff frequency, or if you're looking at somebody else's filter, how you can figure out what the cutoff frequency is for that one without having to actually build it and do a frequency response yourself. Fortunately, there is a formula that describes what the cutoff frequency is for a particular filter. So for an RC filter, the cutoff frequency is defined as 1 divided by 2 pi times the resistance times the capacitance. For example, on the filter that we just looked at, where the resistor was 1 kilo ohm and the capacitor was 1 microfarad, the cutoff frequency comes out to be about 159 hertz. And that's what we saw in our uh, frequency response curve as well. We saw that it was between 100 and 200. So this gives us a more precise uh, number for what that is. You can choose the resistor and capacitor that you want in order to, uh, to achieve any cutoff frequency that you desire. And calculation is the same for low pass filters or high pass filters. The only difference is that with low pass filters, the frequencies below the cutoff frequency go through, and for high pass filters, the frequencies above the cutoff frequency pass through. We can also design filters with inductors. With inductors, the cutoff frequency is defined as the resistance divided by 2 pi L. So we can use that to find our cutoff frequency. Let's review some of the things that we talked about in this presentation. First of all, filters allow certain frequencies to pass through, but they block out other frequencies. This is important for audio applications, radio applications, sensors, and more. Low pass filters can be built with capacitors or inductors, and high pass filters can also be built with capacitors or inductors. These filters work because inductors allow low frequencies to pass through them, but block out high frequencies, whereas capacitors allow high frequencies to block, go through them, but block out low frequencies. A filter's cutoff frequency is the point where the output voltage drops to 70.7% of its input voltage. And we can use these formulas to find what the cutoff frequency is for a particular filter. For a capacitor filter, the cutoff frequency is 1 over 2 pi RC. For an inductive filter, the cutoff frequency is R over 2 pi L. These formulas work for high pass or low pass filters. So I hope you have learned a little bit about capacitor and inductor filters, and I'll see you next time.